Here we have a HP G6 2000 series. My Pacific model is the 2304 AU. This is similar to the HP DB6 3000 series. So you'll see some similarities in that. Remember to put your laptop on something soft so you don't scratch it when you move it around or damage your laptop. So, flip to the back if you haven't by pressing the button. Now we're going to remove one screw holding the back cover down. It exposes the wireless card, RAM and hard drive. And I apologize for the cat. So here's the screw. After you remove the screw, the screw stays on and you just slide the cover down to remove it. I'll just show you again. From your view, you slide it up and you have to tilt it diagonally in to put it back in. So here's the wireless card, RAM and hard drive. So to remove the RAM, push the two sides out and the RAM pops up. To remove the hard drive, remember to remove the string and the rest is just... Now we're going to remove the wireless card. There's one screw holding the wireless card down and remember to remove the cables. And the RAM pops, uh, and the wireless card pops up after you remove it. We now have to remove all the screws at the back. We need to remove one screw to remove the DVD drive. I'm just going to show you now. Remove the DVD drive, and after that you remove all the screws on the back to remove the keyboard cover and the keyboard Now that we have removed all the screws, we need to flip the laptop open to pull out the keyboard. So now you can use a prying tool or use your hand to pry the keyboard from the top. Your keyboard, as there's a keyboard attached to the board, so don't just go ripping out your keyboard. There's a few screws under here there before you can remove the keyboards around.
So now that we removed all the screws and tabs, we need your priming tool again to separate the top from the bottom. It's relatively really easy to remove as long as you removed all your cables. And be gentle when you pull it in case you forgot some screws or cables so you don't rip them, just like what I did. So that's your CPU, your graphic card's under there. So now we're going to remove the motherboard. You need to remove all the cables attached to the motherboard to remove it. That was the DVD drive cable, this one's the LCD one. Cable, remember to remove that as well. And there's one screw holding the motherboard down which is here and when you put it back you have to put it back diagonally as well so just going to show you now so that's how you back in put it back in diagonally as well So now we're going to remove the heating. So there's four screws holding the heating down to the CPU. You can remove them in any order, but when you put it back, you can't put it back in any order. There's numbers next to the screws to tell you what which screw you have to screw in first, but the numbers are barely visible to the eye. So this is why I cannot show you on camera. Just follow me when you screw it back in and you should be fine. When you remove your heatsink, there's sticky tape holding the heatsink part down, double sided sticky tape, and remember to remove your fan cable. So just put a bit of force in it and it'll come off. So here you go. Remember every time you remove your heatsink, you must reapply thermal paste. I'm just going to get a cloth and clean it now. We now got to remove the CPU. You need a flathead screwdriver to remove. So here you go. Turn it half a circle, and it releases your CPU. I'm going to show you here. On the side of the CPU, there's a triangle, and on the motherboard, there's this square. It shows you the direction which the CPU goes in and the CPU only goes in one direction so just replace your CPU and remember to tighten your screw again half a circle clockwise this is where your graphic card is supposed to be, this one doesn't have one 
and these squares are your RAM for your graphic card. We now got to remove the fan and clean the heatsink. To remove the hand fan from the heating, there's two screws holding it down and there's a tab. You need to remove the two screws and then remove the tab on the side. If your laptop's old and is the fan's making a louder sound and it's overheating and turning off, you will need to clean your heating. Here's the tab. Later on you'll see, now I removed it, you'll see how much fan dust build up there is. This laptop was only used for a year. The laptop was overheating, it was re -stop, uh, or shutting down automatically. So just get a vacuum cleaner and clean, clean that, or whatever way you want, toothbrush. Now that I have vacuumed it separately, as you can see now, it's a lot cleaner and you can see individ each individual gap. So now we're going to reapply thermal paste and put the heatsink back on. I'm using Arctic Silver 5. Don't be cheap on thermal paste. And the amount of thermal paste you want to put on the CPU is only a rice grain size. Remember not to spread it out. So we just place the heatsink on top. Remember to plug back your fan in. Don't forget to do that, as that's really important. And to screw it back in, follow the way I screw it, as this spreads out the thermal paste evenly. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. It doesn't have much steps. But just remember to put your screws aside so you don't forget where each screw goes. As there's a few number of screws and putting the screw in the wrong hole is a bad idea. And that's about it. Thanks for watching my video.